Hello, everyone, and welcome to Girls Camp. I am joined by a frequent guest of the show, Bentley Rawl, my husband. Hello, everyone. Welcome back, Bentley. Today's topic is crazy Mormon adjacent dating stories. And as I was reading through, I thought I need Bentley to react to these with me. I think some of the, I say this a lot, but I actually think some of these are some of the craziest write-ins I have ever read on the Girls Camp podcast. Let's just hope that none of these date back to when I was single. They are probably about you, about half of them, (laughs) based on how many women you dated before we met. Well, It's just statistics. Statistics. I probably went on a date with at least one of them. At BYU, you were a serial dater. What was your... Tell tell the campers what your dating... Regiment. cadence was uh-huh you had a you every had a very single specific week I, I made a commitment well i came home from my mission and i made a commitment to myself because my mission president told me to kind of he told me just to get married as fast as i could but what um, did he say exactly get married as fast as you can when you get home not that but he just like you know how they say like okay get married your next step is marriage in the temple like you need to do that and he like kind of like hammered that down to yeah me. i took that call Seriously. Then I decided, I was like, okay, I'm going to go on one date a week until I find the person who I'm going to marry. <laughs> and what was your date every week? I went to... Um, Roll up crepes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was it? Is it that what it's called? I can't remember. A crepe place. A crepe place in Provo. And there was an open mic night. If you went up and did an open mic night, you got a free crepe. And so I was like, okay, this is cheap. Like, okay, I'm, and I can show off a little it's bit. It's literally free. And it's, yeah, it's literally free and an opportunity just to, you know, serenade or whatever. Serenade sing. your date, get a free crepe. <laughs> yeah. And do it again <laughs> the next day. I'm so week. embarrassed about that. But yeah, I would go and I was like having connection. It wasn't like all like bad, but definitely looking back at it i'm just that was so so just immature of me to like think that i could like rush that process you know i mean yeah maybe not even so much immature i mean i think that's kind of what we were told to do like to your yeah. point that's what your mission president said that's what the culture wants us to do you just took it very literally i think and very seriously and yeah when our first year or two of marriage i feel like every person we ever met you had gone on a date with, which is not true. Not really. But that's what it felt like. That's to be fair, we also met a lot of people that I had previously dated as well. And we still run into those people. Yeah. Yeah. And some of them are our closest friends. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Well, there is some background on Bentley as a serial dater at BYU. And yes, as I said, we have many a story to jump into today. Before we jump in, let's campfire chat. How are you? You've been cold plunging. Yes, I um, have been wanting to buy a cold plunge for a long time, and I just bought a cheap one off Amazon. Do you know that I get the ad for that little tub you bought every single time I get on Instagram now? Probably just because you said cold plunge or your your phone's hurt. I know, now I'm going to keep getting them. But yeah, I mean, I think it's just an Alibaba ripoff because they're like a thousand of the same design, but just different brands. It works pretty well, at least in the winter. It works great. Um, I had to break three inches of ice this morning and I sat in there. I wanted to break my record and I did. I did four and a half minutes. I'm so scared of cold plunging. I cannot explain to you. I think about it a lot. I genuinely will think about is today the day? Am I going to do it? I'm so scared of it. It feels so scary to me. I hate it so badly. I hate cold water so bad. I know that I will start doing it one day and be obsessed with it and be so annoying about it and never shut up about it. <laughs> but I'm so scared to do it. What I makes need to you, do it. What makes you feel like you're called to it? Because I so badly don't want to do it. And I know that it would be good for me because of how badly I dread it. Thinking about cold plunging and that hyperventilating feeling freaks me out so bad that I know getting past that would be really empowering and really helpful and good nervous system regulation, all the things that all the people say. Yeah. But just getting myself to do it, I don't know why. It's such a block for me. And I think that's the 
one of the main benefits of doing it is frankly just starting your day with doing something you really don't want to do and it doesn't even matter what time of day you do it just doing something that you can feel proud of after yeah doing a hard thing yeah and it physically makes you feel better actually feels yeah for sure i actually remember how i was like my arms were falling asleep and stuff and like oh yeah randomly i think by poor circulation or i don't know why it was happening but i'm not getting that anymore which is interesting you heard it here first yeah fixes all kinds of ailments cold plunging mostly mental and emotional i think but yeah no i'm proud of you it's so snowy here right now and it's off of our balcony in our bedroom and every time i look out that window it just sends an absolute shiver down my spine okay let's jump into the dating stories i was racking my brain i feel like i have a pretty poor memory of dating i have some kind of weird experiences but nothing crazy crazy do you have any crazy crazy dating experiences not really Actually, I mean, maybe these stories are going to jog my memory. I hope not. Yeah, we'll but, see. Um, yeah, nothing too crazy. Yeah, me neither. I think we maybe got off easy. We also got married so young, so we weren't dating for a super long time. But I was kind of shocked and dismayed to hear what people are out there dealing with when it comes to Mormon dating and Mormon adjacent dating. Okay. Story number one, I dated this boy who wore winter gloves so he wouldn't touch me because touching is a slippery slope. It was summer. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) Wearing gloves anytime he was around her so he couldn't physically, had a physical barrier to not touch her body. I mean, that's nuts, but also I can kind of understand his logic, which is kind of crazy. Not like, like how he got there. Yeah. Not like you would do it, hopefully. No, never. I wouldn't do that. (laughs) Bentley takes his gloves off quietly. (laughs) (laughs) But I understand how people can get to that point, which is kind of also nuts that that, I don't know, that people take it that far. Yeah. Wearing gloves. Also, how much... In the summer. Lack of self-control that this person feels Mm. like they can't control themselves if they touch someone with their... Someone else's... Yeah, it's like... (laughs) With their bare hands. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, it's actually, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought about that, but I think sometimes because there are such strict rules around dating and physicality, like how physical you can be as Mormons who are dating, you think that it would teach self-discipline, but I actually feel like sometimes it does the opposite where people, I don't know, it's like they're so all or nothing or something that men actually are not learning how to just literally control themselves and instead they're doing crazy ass shit like this instead of just being normal well-adjusted adult men and then it can backfire right where because they don't actually know how to control themselves in like normal physical situations with women they are it seems from what I can tell maybe more likely to you know push boundaries without consent or do like weird crazy sexual things because they're so repressed on this other side of things yeah it's almost like oh like if they break their rule of like wearing gloves then they'll just go crazy yeah then they're just gonna have sex (laughs) it kind of reminds me of that story like oh take the trash out or something like the missionary story where you have to take the trash out every day or else like you're gonna if you don't take the trash out then it's like a slippery slope into like breaking other rules oh my gosh and which is like i remember on my mission thinking yeah, I need to I need to find my trash thing that I can do every day so I can start my day off right. Or else you'll descend the slippery slope yeah. and be a degenerate missionary. Yeah. Yeah. The slippery slope thinking is really brutal on our brains. I think in so many ways and I think particularly with sexuality stuff, it is still ingrained in some ways that like any sexual exploration is a slippery slope to complete degeneracy. Which is not true. No. Right? Never. Any other thoughts on the... I was just going to say like, man, I I was thinking like, what if this guy is listening to this podcast episode? I want people to know that like, hey, it's not necessarily your fault if like you were that person, Mm. you know, because... I don't know. This person's pretty weird. 
<laughs> they are kind of weird, but like this, I, I get your you point. Know I do saying? get your point. This is a little extreme where I'm like, this person is just it's pretty maybe. extreme, but I mean, it's also like, okay, maybe there's something going on, but like, okay, they were probably taught by someone else that they respected or whatever to that they got they misinterpreted yeah. what they were saying to that got to this point, and it's like, okay, yeah, the misinterpretation that's lack of self awareness. Um, they were just trying to be good they were trying to be good it was like it, you know which maybe was i mean obviously it's weird as hell but like yeah no i get your point let's move on from psychoanalyzing winter glove boy <laughs> okay next one i went on a tinder date with a byu football player we made out in his basement and then he ghosted me Turns out he was just weeks from proposing to his girlfriend that I had no idea about. She posted the proposal photos and he didn't. Oh. I always BYU wonder. BYU football player. Huh? I know. The BYU football players, the BYU basketball players. I was remembering. I don't know if you remember this. There was a BYU basketball player probably when I was in high school that got a woman pregnant. Do you remember this? I think I do. He got a woman pregnant and then got kicked off the team and it was this huge deal. And I was just thinking about the pressure on, not that this guy, anything he was doing was appropriate. Like he didn't obviously need to cheat on his girlfriend. But I also think of sports players who come to BYU who are not Mormon, but who are supposed to keep the honor code, which is just so crazy. Imagine being a regular person getting recruited to BYU to play basketball or football and then being expected to be sexually abstinent because you go to BYU. <laughs> I just wonder if they're, I wonder what that process is like for them to be, to download all this information on Mormonism and the rules and the honor code. Like, what is that process? I know that BYU is not the only school that has an honor code. I think a lot of schools have an honor code. But not like BYU. Not like BYU, though. The culture shock alone would yeah. be crazy. And I'm sure they get here. I mean, I, I, you should interview a BYU athlete that was never Mormon. That would be an interesting Yeah, it would be an interesting conversation. Because like coming in so blindsided probably to like this culture, especially the hyper... Purity culture? Yeah, that, that BYU specifically in Provo in the, like the college community fosters. It's just kind of... Um, radical and also probably who knows if this kid was mormon or not or whatever but like an athlete in the limelight probably feels pressure to get married mm. but also feels like he's not ready and so like this get is i don't know it's such a crazy thing it's like don't get married man if you're making out with someone two weeks before proposing and i wonder if that ended up you know sad for that girl successful or not you know yeah, I wonder who it and is. And if you're listening, come clean to your wife if you haven't. So, <laughs> Yeah, which BYU football player yeah. are you? I'll go ask my little brother who he suspects from. I mean, who knows when this was written in. Is but. it bad that I can't really name one BYU football player? A current BYU football player? At all. No. I mean, I'm trying to think. Um, I can name who's old th- ones, but I can't name current ones. The last BYU football player I remember is Zach Wilson. I was trying to jog my memory for that kid's name. And I have, it's You've what, met him. I've met him and I've literally watched Hard Knocks and I don't know why I couldn't remember his name. Yeah. But I met him. That's the last one is, I remember. Is Tanner Mangum, is that one? <laughs> that does sound familiar. Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill? He's in the NFL, isn't he? I think he's in the NFL. Tanner Mangum. That just sounds like a generic name, but I don't know. We'll Google it after. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> I dated an AP for my mission. Do you know anything about being an AP or anything? Could you shed light on that experience? Yeah, I was close to my mission president towards the end of my mission. <laughs> that's all you want to say on the matter? That's all I want. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. I dated an AP for my mission as soon as I got home from serving. Like two days from returning was our first date. So she went on a date with the AP two days after getting back from her mission. Our first date consisted of going to Deseret Book and buying one of Elder Bednar's books, Increase in Learning. We studied, took notes, and made dinner together. It was fun, but literally every date consisted of this. When we finished the book, he surprised me by taking me back to Deseret Book and buying another book for us to study from. 
I think we did this eight weekends in a row. When I finally asked for a real date, he took me to Chili's. All was going well until he told me we would be eating off of the skinny menu because he knew I was still working on losing the mission weight. When he dropped me off, I told him I was ready to date other people and wished him luck finding a wife, only willing to study conference talks and religious books and eat off skinny menus for the rest of their lives. Oh. Sounds like an AP thing to do for if we're being honest. Some maybes. <laughs> I hope not me. But holy shit. How horrible is that? So horrible. I mean, I get the conference talk thing, not knowing how to switch out of AP mode, but like... The skinny the menu. The skinny menu? I know, and this girl was even willing to do the conference talk thing for eight weekends. Golly. Eight weekends. Before he essentially said you need to lose weight and I'm going to control what you eat god damn i'm sorry yikes this was about five years ago while i was on my mission and i still occasionally think about it i was writing another elder in a different mission because i was honestly bored and lonely as most missionaries are we had gone on a few dates beforehand but never were official after a few months of writing back and forth he told me that if we were ever to get married he promised to let me pick his next wives in heaven and reassured me that he would always love me the most at this point, I didn't even realize that polygamy after death was a concept we believed in. How nice and considerate of him to let me pick my sister wives. He was so whack looking back, and I'm very glad that I did not marry him. Dating as a member is wild. The way this guy was thinking about having extra wives in the next life. Like, you know he was sitting there excited about that being his future. It's in those types of like doctrines, those esoteric type doctrines that i feel feel like a lot of us missionaries we just like fixate on because it's like it's not just the general like gospel that we like teach and study every day you know and the fact that like we probably we communicate about random nor- like like those types of things like it's normal which is fucking weird you know it's like <laughs> yeah oh i'll let you yeah i mean like like were we intelligences before this what's an intelligence did you ever get on that kick oh for sure but Thankfully, I didn't like dive too deep. I got probably deep in some me. deep shit on my mission. Like that kind of thing. Just yeah. deep dive doctrine, which I want to do a full episode on. Those really kind of esoteric, like you said, doctrines. But I mean, having extra wives in heaven, I think I knew that growing up. Did you know that was a thing? I never thought about it. I never even like honestly understood, dove into polygamy mm. ever until post-mission. Maybe it was like Dr. Sweat's um, class when we like yeah, studied D- D&C. You know, that's when I like allowed myself to do it because it was under this direction of professor, you know. Yeah. But like I never tr- tried to dive deep in it at all. But. You weren't some, looking forward to many wives in the next life? I, I just. You can hardly handle I have a that. hard time wrapping my head around the doctrine, you know. You don't want many wives in the next life. You, you're you uh, shirking my question. Oh, of course I'd love many wives in the next life. <laughs> then you missed my joke where he said, you're having a hard time handling one. I am having a hard time handling <laughs> one. Imagine having, honestly, sister wives. I do think this is, I'm being lighthearted about this because polygamy is very problematic, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes I do think having some sister wives would be pretty cool. I think that being the husband of sister wives would actually be less cool than you think it would be. Not you specifically. Obviously, okay, great. You can have sex with like three, four women or whatever. But I think it would be such a difficult relationship dynamic to upkeep being one man with three, four, five, however many women, I think it would be not very fun. Yeah, it's it would be exhausting. I don't know. Like the only way it would work is you'd have to be an incredibly good communicator and everyone would have to would have to be. You yeah. Know? But that being said, I agree with you. I think having a like having for you to have other women to like bond with and like more just like it almost is like a family. It'd just member. be nice to have more help. More but help. Also, but like, the more sister wives, then you just have more kids. It probably kind of balances out. Yeah. You're getting more help, but then there's like more kids to take care of. Yeah. More households, you know. I think the cons outweigh the pros of a polygamist. 
Well, polygamy, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, I went on a date with a BYU Provo guy that I met on Tinder. We went to get ice cream at McDonald's for a first date. And when he took me home, we made out in his car for a few minutes. After I went inside, he texted me from his car that he didn't see this going anywhere because he needed a good girl that didn't make out on first dates. All right, mister. Same goes to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The road goes both ways. She just responds, oh, perfect. I actually want a good boy who also doesn't make out on first dates. Yeah. But imagine taking a girl to McDonald's, spending $3 max, making out with her, and then essentially slut shaming her for making out with you. Crazy. Damn, yeah. Well, their ice cream is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, sounds pretty good right It does now. sound good. The McFlurry with M&M's. <laughs> yeah. Or the hot fudge sundae. The, fu- the sundae is good. At least she got a free hot fudge sundae out I know. of this situation. And a make out with no commitment. I know, but post like fry breath, you know. No, he didn't get her fries. Just ice cream? Just ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think this is the dynamic that happens when you teach young men that women and what they wear in some way removes accountability from how men act and behave this is the outcome and i mean this is awful but kind of mild but just to think that a man can equally participate in a makeout and then say "Mm, actually i want a good girl that doesn't do that so i'm never gonna see you again i know also like just don't say that if that's how you feel you're like that's one thing it was just you feeling guilty and then like making it someone else's fault not owning Oh, I want. I don't want to make out on my first day, so whatever. He also didn't have to make out. No, it's like, but that was his fault. Yeah, it sounds like this guy's MO. I yeah. doubt that she was the first. I had my tithing settlement, and my bishop asked about my dating life. Nothing was happening at the time, and that evening, the ward clerk, who I'd never spoken to, called me and asked me on a date. I accepted to be polite, and the next week, he picked me up. His passion... <laughs> his passion... <laughs> His passenger seatbelt didn't work, so his car beeped the entire drive to Blaze Pizza in Blaise. Orem. I'm all, I'm all about Blaze. He didn't. Sorry, he didn't tell me it was a double date for his brother's birthday with his wife. <laughs> he asked if it was okay if we split a pizza and wore Crocs, no socks. There's nothing like being invited on a pity date. You know your bishop initiated. There was not a second date. Is that not? A date from absolute hell. Crocs, no socks. Birthday dinner with his brother and wife. Splitting a pizza. A place pizza and worm. And the car beeping. (laughs) What the fuck? Also, wait. She didn't even really go to the church. No, she was going to tithing settlement. She told her bishop. Her bishop's like, are you dating anyone? And she's like, no, not really. So the bishop asked the ward clerk to Uh ask her on the date. And that's what he took around the date. What the hell? Why is why are these bishops feeling like they are responsible for getting these kids married? Honestly, it's that too. Like I came yeah. home from a mission, and like I, I was reinforced with the same idea. Oh, it's all they talk about. Every in singles words. Yeah, in a singles word. It's all they talk about is get married. What are how are people dating? Oh, but by the way, also don't be kissing each other. Don't be making out. But, oh, yeah, that's all singles words talked about right out of high school. I went to King Henry, which is usually people will stay in the dorms for their freshman year at BYU. But I lived at off-campus housing, but it's like BYU contracted still. And that was a really weird situation because I was young. I was 18 still. But most people who lived at King Henry, the apartment complex, they were return missionaries. So it was 22. I think it was pre- I mean, yeah, 21 to 24-ish, which felt so old to me at the time, which is so funny. But it was guys just very anxious to get married, and I was 18. So I would have these guys asking me on dates, and I was like wanting to go on a mission. I was planning on going on a mission, so I wasn't really dating super seriously. But there was some odd fellows in in that mix. Did you ever go on any of those odd dates? I went on a date with a guy named Phil. And I decided to say yes because we went, um, what are, water jet skiing? Jet skiing on at Deer Creek. And I was like, yeah, sounds fun. So I went on a date with him, and his friend's name was Creighton. 
<laughs> Creighton. Creighton. So I, I think. I wonder if that name exists outside of Utah. Creighton. Yeah, I hope he's not listening. Creighton. It's okay, Creighton. He was a nice guy. So was Phil. But yeah, they. I remember they were like 23. They seemed so old and they were just kind of an interesting pair. It was an interesting date. I don't remember much about it besides <laughs> the jet skiing. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Whatever. Okay. I dated a boy from my mission, LMAO, I should have known, and he tried to propose to me without us talking about it. He bought a ring and everything. He popped the question on his family trip, and I had to break up with him three days into the five-day family trip. Proposing without Wait, making... Wait, so she was on the trip with his family? Yeah. Oh, my God. And then he proposed, and she said no, and they had two more days of the trip. And they broke up. She wow. didn't say. <laughs> Pretty badass. You said she broke up with him three days into the trip. No, she... Oh, you're right. You're right. She did break so up with him. So she had two days left. I'm no longer dating you, but we. I have to be around you. I'm on this trip with your family. Proposing to someone without making sure that you're on the same page about getting married is so ill-advised. I feel like that's like how they used to do it, though. You think? I mean... You know? Maybe, but I think... It depends. I think there's the time when you're talking to someone and you're like, hey, like, do you want to get married? And then you're like, okay, he's going to propose to me. But n- if never an- I think it. back in the day, the proposal was considered when the man would be like, hey, do you want to marry me? Right? Yeah. And it was less of a production maybe. But I feel like if you're going to get down on one knee, have a ring type situation, you better have talked in length about if you want to get married or not. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yikes. Family trip with this weird guy and his family for two days. Hopefully you were somewhere fun. (laughs) Man, I just want to know how those other two days... (laughs) Yeah, what that was like. Okay. There... Oh my gosh. There were these two kids that were dating in my high school. One time after they hung out, the boy went to drop the girl off at her home. They started to make out, parked in front of her house, and one thing led to another, and they both got fully naked. But before they went too far, they both realized what was happening and started to pray together. Praying together in a car in front of her house, naked. She later told my friend who was in her ward this story because she had to speak to her bishop about it. Oh my gosh. Praying naked in the car. (laughs) Couldn't put their clothes back on before they prayed. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I could see myself doing this. Oh. (laughs) My old self. Not really. I would never do that. I get what you're saying. You understand where that's coming from. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. They were in high school. Oh, they were in high school. Okay. I take it all back. Actually, that's kind of crazier to me. It's not it, like they have like the... Yeah, maybe it the, is a little crazier. It's not like they have like the crazy mish, post-mission like do- indoctrination, you know? You're still pretty indoctrinated in high school. But yeah, I see what you're saying. Crazy both ways. Yeah. A naked prayer. It's kind of nice. <laughs> kind of sexy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this one is about me and my now husband, and I'm screaming about it six years later. <laughs> After our first date, I knew I would marry him. Cringe, but I was right. After our second, we went back to my BYU student housing apartment to watch The Office, which he loves, and I still to this day don't care for. We had been texting and talking for a while before these dates, and I felt like we knew each other well. We were cuddling on the couch, and I asked him if he was going to kiss me. We started kissing, making out, and I don't know how it happened, but my shirt and bra were off, and I had never done anything like that before. In a moment of panic, I stopped the kiss and I looked down at him with my boobs fully in his face and asked him, do you have a testimony? Which he said yes. And then we just carried on. I (laughs) cried and bawled about it the next day. But now years later, we look back and laugh. That sounds like something. Do you have a testimony? Okay, that's all that matters. We'll figure this out. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's incredible. Boobs in face. Do you have a testimony? She asked him. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible. I love it. I love it. What a funny story. That one feels deeply relatable where you're like, okay, whatever. They have a testimony. Totally. We can we can repent of this tomorrow. Yeah. This next thing I'm going to read is 
probably one of the craziest submissions I've ever gotten on girls camp for sure. I already texted it to some of our friends. So you know what it is. I want to put an extra warning. It's a little bit graphic, but it's very short. So skip ahead 15 seconds if you don't want to hear it. I was eaten out at an overnight church function by a man named Joseph Smith. Do you remember this one? No. You don't remember? Maybe I wasn't. I sent it to a group chat. You probably didn't read it. Holy cow. Was eaten out at an overnight church function by a man named Joseph Smith. I sent this one to Tanner so fast. Why? Why? Wait, wait, wait. Why was there an overnight church function? Like a youth conference or something. I think. Okay, this has to be... Who's naming their kid Joseph Smith? Oh my gosh, right? Let's start there. Yeah, and... Kid named Joseph Smith. It has to be foreign. They have to like... I doubt it. You think you, you don't think it's like some Euro, European or stuff? I mean, Smith, last name Smith, I guess. But crazy. Yeah, they had the last name Smith, and they're like, oh, let's just name him Joseph. And then he ends up eating a girl out at probably youth conference. Or whatever overnight church function it may be. Gosh, dang. <laughs> I texted the balls, Tanner that. The balls that this guy has. The balls. <laughs> I love well, it. Well, I guess it's not about his balls. That one's pretty crazy, right? Yeah. I think that's a girls camp greatest hit. No, that's incredible. I love that. Yeah, I think it's, we, it's kind of life affirming, is it not? <sighs> yeah, I bet Joseph Smith has done something like that before. I was going to say, it's very <laughs> actually probably on brand with... Yeah the real joseph smith yeah probably okay when i was a freshman at byu i met this kid in my writing 250 class let's call him josh josh and i flirted and talked a lot during class but that was the extent of our relationship i had a mission call at the time but he asked me out on a date i was really excited he told me the date was a surprise and gave me no details he picked me up for the date and we drove straight to the pace and temple we parked in the parking lot and he turned on a special playlist he made just for the night Josh told me that God told him to wait for me on my mission and that we were going to get married. I said, no, please don't wait for me, Josh. It was incredibly uncomfortable and safe to say that Josh and I did not get married. Uh, That one's scary because I feel like that happens. It's spiritual manipulation. It is. And I think it happens a lot. That one's really scary. When someone is saying, God told me this, God told me that I'm supposed to wait for you and I want to get married. Good for her. She was like, bullshit. But- People can get sucked into that, right? Like you can see how you'd be like, oh my gosh, well, if God told you, it's really scary. Yeah, I feel like I've heard that one a lot. So many times. And like, what's the scariest part is that like, that's the whole idea about personal revelation, making it feel like it's actually God telling you a thing. And then like, but then like the church talks about like, oh, but like, it's all about your dominion. You can't like receive like, Relation, right. revelation for other people, but gets hairy. It gets hairy, and then, but like, but people are like, "Well, I had this feeling," and it's like, dude, that's just because you like like this girl. Yeah, you think she's hot. You get butterflies around her when you're praying. You're asking God, "Should I marry this girl?" And you get feelings like dreaming about like this life with her. That's the manip- That's the scariest part. It's yeah. this mind trick. I mean, trick. in a way. This guy's being spiritually manipulated too. He is, yeah. frankly. And then feels like he needs to like, like, dude, keep that to yourself. And then maybe write her on your mission, whatever, you know. See what happens. See yeah. what happens. And then, but like, still, that's just like really. So uncomfy. So Thinking uncomfortable. you're going on a first date and you essentially get proposed to. But also pretty bold. bold. Very bold. Yeah. And maybe it could have worked. Josh has balls. Speaking yeah. of balls. He does have balls <laughs> cojones i had a guy break up with me 10 days after we made it official because he just didn't see himself marrying me he broke up with me on a sunday the following wednesday he met a girl at our apartment's clubhouse pool a week and a half later on friday they were engaged dodged a bullet there whoa engaged in a week and a half god damn we were two months. <laughs> At least it was two months. Lest you forget. <laughs> I know. That's what's so crazy is the further we get, I talk about this a lot, but the further we get from our story of meeting, getting married, the crazier it seems. And ours was a little crazy. I would say on the scale of crazy Mormon meeting to getting married, 
to getting engaged to getting married we were a little extreme but nothing really but crazy it was typical kind of i would say we were standard on the side of fast yeah. but it wasn't like people didn't think it was crazy i mean it was kind of like oh whoa like when you know you know a week and a half from meeting to engaged a week and a half wow it's just wild because i think we said we loved each other within like two weeks but like yes and honestly you can't learn someone very much more in two months than you can in 10 days to be fair you really can't so none of us really fully knew each other if we you know if you're under like a three four month dating before you get engaged it's all pretty crazy so i say we fit into this camp but at least it was more than 10 days yeah good job yeah yeah Met a guy off a Mormon singles dating site while I was at BYU. I met him for a date in a public place. He wanted to meet at a Smith's grocery store and then go for a walk in the neighborhood. Um, okay. Little did I know that the walk would lead to his family's house where I would meet his whole family. On this walk, he proceeded to ask me if I was planning on having children, told me that he did not believe in birth control and wanted kids immediately. The reason for this was using birth control was the same sin as masturbation because it, quote, spilled seed onto the ground without procreating. I ended the walk date very shortly after that and did not respond to his later messages. Nightmare. What the fuck? Did you ever hear that spilling seed onto the ground thing? Never. That's gross. Also, is that even real? Is that like, I mean, what does like birth control have to do with that? He's just saying, I think, that if you come and it's not used to try and make a child, it's like wasting it, the seed. I know, but then the birth control, it's like... The birth control makes it so that it's wasted, I guess. Because if you're not on birth control, then you could get pregnant. I see. Which, to be fair, it's like, okay, well, what if she's not ovulating, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It's nonsensical. Yeah. But I've never heard that justification mm-hmm. for why to not use birth control. Okay, when I was at BYU, I was cuddling, making out in my bed. I know, a big no-no. And he tried to get things to go farther. I said no, and things got awkward. So we were just hanging out in my bed watching a TV show. Next thing I know, he was getting himself off and asking me for a washcloth. I was so speechless. I didn't know what to do. So I just got up and got him a washcloth. The worst thing was he left it in my room for me to throw away. WTF. What the hell? That's crazy. That's probably sexual assault to masturbate next to someone without their consent. Oh, 100%. Like, that's crazy. And the lack of shame just carrying on by themselves and then being like washcloth please then leaving uh, it for them to take care of was do you feel like the story was when this girl was out of the church or in or like she said i was at byu so she probably. was at byu that's crazy was this stuff happening like does this is this normal oh, a million percent People were having set, all sorts of things were happening. But I do think it leads to, again, to the point I was kind of trying to make about the gloves. I do think it leads to a really scary culture with sexual assault and stuff because consent gets really muddied because when you're both like trying to be good, but you're pushing boundaries, it just gets way worse and more confusing. And consent is just not even something that's considered in the Mormon paradigm around sex and sexuality and so people do shit like this that blew my mind that a man would have the audacity i mean not that i'm necessarily surprised but i think that's so awful yeah that's nuts get your own damn washcloth i know i mean that feels like a mature type of relationship it's like okay like you don't we're married you don't want to have sex okay fine like i'll just go do my thing maybe maybe but not right there in front of you. I don't know. I wonder how this guy could get his, his himself to this place where he like, feels like... Yeah, I probably liked it. He feels... I mean, I'm sure like well, he, he gets apparently off Apparently he did like it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I understand why he, he someone would get off on that. It's... Yeah, sexual, sexual assault. That's really scary, actually, for the girl. Yeah. Really yeah. icky. Really degrading. This one's wild. 
After I told the boy I was on a date with that I was learning how to make sourdough bread, he said, have you ever heard of President Oak's talk, good, better, best? I think that making sourdough bread is good, but what is something better or even best that you could do with your time? I told him that if President Nelson can ski in his spare time, I think I can learn to make sourdough bread. The date lasted for another solid 15 minutes before I told him it was late and I needed to leave. (laughs) Shaming her for spending her time making sourdough bread. Do you remember the good, better, best talk? I think I do. That's so crazy. I took the good, better, best talk to heart. For anyone who doesn't know, President Oaks is an apostle, and it was essentially like, there are good things you can do with your time, and there are better things, and there are best things. And of course, the best things you can do are pray, read your scriptures, go to church. And that's a manipulative talk, now that I'm thinking about it. It just is manipulative. It's also shaming people who Who are just like doing normal things, who, too. Who maybe like why are you making sourdough bread because it's like oh like you there's so many reasons why you could be making bread i love her clap back which is if the prophet of the goddamn mormon church is bragging about skiing as a 90 year old yeah that was a great clap then i think she can make some sourdough bread and be okay (laughs) if a man ever said this to me i don't know what i would have done when i was dating i probably would have been like oh I don't know, depending where I was at, but if a man ever dared say something like this to me, they would get an earful. I've been there. (laughs) With you. (laughs) When I've been making sourdough bread. Yeah, when you're making sourdough bread. You wish. I wish. I wish you would make sourdough bread. I want to, actually. I know you do. You should. I do. Gluten-free. They have those. Do you think that's the best use of your time, though? It's a good use of my time, though. Is there anything better you could be doing with your time? Um, no. There's nothing better. This isn't my story, but it's a story of one of my member friends. She had been talking to this guy for a bit, so they decided to meet up and go on a date. While on their date, my friend was sharing things about herself when her date interrupted her and said, Are you fertile? She asked, What did you just say? He replied, I asked you if you're fertile. Do you know if you're fertile or not? She stood up and said, That is so inappropriate. I think we're done here and left. These women, I'm proud of them. I am too. I seriously feel like, I mean, I was so much younger. It was so long ago. I was such a needy for male validation girl. Not like I was just, I don't know. I had a feistiness about me even back then. But for this girl just to be like, bye is so badass. Because that is such a deeply inappropriate question. Are you fertile? What's what's like, are you fertile? What's so crazy about that, too, is that this kid, they don't even know what that even means. No. Like, why are you even like, like, that has nothing to do. Like, you're a 23 year old boy, maximum. Get over it yourself. Are you fertile? Are you fertile? Are you fertile? Go get your sperm checked. Yeah. That's what I would have said. <laughs> <laughs> are there any stories from the male perspective? No. No, none of them came through. I actually don't know. I didn't get to read through all of them. I never do. I would love one day putting this out in the universe to hire someone to read through the stories because I'm never able to read through all of them. I try and read through most of them, but I don't think any of them were from a male perspective. I just wonder if there's anything like crazy that a girl did to a guy or something. Girls never do anything crazy to guys. You're probably right. Girls are perfect. Girls win. Girls deserve to win. Girls win. Girls deserve to win. We used to play this charades game with our friend group, and it was always boys against girls, and the girls, of course, always always won. won. And we would say girls win. Girls deserve to win. It was girls plus Tanner. Was Tanner on our team? Always. Amazing. Okay. I had a guy tell me on a date that women shouldn't go to law school as it takes away spots for fathers providing for their families. This was, of course, after I told him I was applying to law school. He also told me all sister missionaries were ugly, and that's why they went on missions. This was also his response to me saying I had just gotten back from a mission. Dude. What? This is the epitome of what happens when you have a dumbass boy who has zero social tact, who's probably ugly himself. Okay, it doesn't matter if he's ugly or not. I'm feeling mad. 
who is whatever. He's a guy who has a lack of charm, probably not a lot of people like him. And so he uses the patriarchal messaging that Mormonism fuels him with to make himself feel better because he's insecure. So he feels like he can be like, well, only ugly girls go on missions and girls shouldn't go to law school because they're taking spots for men. It's like, how insecure can you be? How insecure in your masculinity can you be to be saying this to a girl you're on a date with? That's true. Honestly, just insecure. He probably just feels threatened by someone who's... Yeah, of course. Someone who's just doing some doing hard things and pursuing their dreams. Just and, cannot handle women existing. Yeah. I hate him. Oh boy, I've been waiting for this my whole life. I was living in Arizona back in 2021. I downloaded Mutual and matched with a guy that asked me out on a date right away. We went to grab frozen yogurt and on the way back home, he asked me if I wanted to go to his apartment and watch a movie. Long story short, we were making out on the couch and he came. He proceeded to offer to buy me the emergency pill since he didn't want to have kids yet. I was confused at first because I didn't realize what happened until I saw my jeans. I tried so hard not to laugh. Needless to say, that was the last time we went out. (laughs) <laughs> thought he got her pregnant <laughs> over the jeans oh. <laughs> like, I, oh man that's just like it's just sad it's just so naive it's so naive here's the thing i don't think my parents ever gave me the talk oh i never had the sex talk you know and my friends and i didn't really talk about it either and so i understand like how being in a sheltered environment you can't you don't know how it yeah, works you don't right have the information. but frankly it's like dude just use your fucking brain you know it's, it's like 2021 google it yeah honey. google it or just like oh like if something gets on your skin you're not gonna get pregnant on your jeans on your jeans you're not gonna get pregnant through that it's i like, know i do sympathize with this because i talked to kylie kadich about this like in high school i remember Even, I think I knew, I rationally knew what sex was, but the shame was so deep that the shame almost made me irrational to think, even though I know that the sperm actually has to enter the vaginal canal in order to have a pregnancy, I had so much shame around it that I think I convinced myself, like, there will be a fluke freak accident, and I will. So I see, I see where that thinking comes from, but you got to educate yourself when you're in the day and age of 2021. And I'm assuming since this was on mutual, like they're adults. I mean, young adults probably, but sweet boy. Do you, do you have to be 18 to go on those apps? I'm, I think so. Like teenagers can't go on Tinder. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't know. I've never thought about it. I highly doubt it. Yeah. I have no idea. Okay, can we talk about God breakups? Every time I dated a Mormon guy, they would dump me because they got revelation. Like, girl, just dump me like a normal person. I feel like it's an attempt to offload personal responsibility or guilt. Did you ever get broken up with because of God or break up with someone because of God? No. No. I don't think I did either. But yeah, shitty. Yeah, it's the same. It's like, it's... I mean, it's because they just, they're finding an easy out to like say, I don't like you. Yeah. It's an easy out. Or I was actually talking to Jenna about this on last week's episode. If you feel like something isn't right, like you actually just feel like, oh, we're not right for each other. You're probably just going to make it about God if you're a Mormon instead of just saying, oh, we're not right for each other. And, you know, I think there's different levels of this, but I agree with this person saying, girl, just dump me like a normal person. Like, you can just say, like, we're not meant for each other, or I don't feel good about moving forward. Not God told me to do it. Girl, so is was it a boy who wrote that in? No, you can just say girl as a, it's just being like girl. Oh, okay. Have you never heard that? Well, it just sounded like, dude. I don't know. Every time I dated a Mormon guy, they would uh, dump me because they got revelation, like girl. Oh, uh, I got you. Cool. Gotta get with the slang, babe. Get with the times slang girl that's some slang (laughs) 
Okay, nothing sums up the BYU dating scene more than this. I had met this guy on Mutual and was on my third date with him. Frankly, it was going pretty well until he told me he received a job offer in California and was moving in a month. I told him that was great, but then I didn't see a point in continuing to go out with him since he was moving. He told me that if I really cared about him, I would move to California with him and give this a real chance. I brought up the fact that I had two more months of my undergrad and was starting a graduate program that fall in Utah. He said, you can put that off for this. After I shut him down again, he said, I really thought you cared about me. And then he asked if he could stick his hands down my pants so I could have, quote, something to remember him by. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. What a... (laughs) Telling a woman, just move to California. What a tactful way to get into someone's pants. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You want to get in her pants? Why don't you tell her that she should drop her undergrad and move to California with you. Yeah. <laughs> Psychotic. This is so classic, but one time I had sex with a guy not knowing he was Mormon. Two days later, he posted a video opening his mission call on Instagram. That guy came home early. You think? <laughs> Probably. I don't know. I think more people were doing that than we think. You think? I think. You don't think? Mm. What do you mean more people? Like what? Like I 1%? Think, or I'm like, just saying I think more people than we realized because we didn't do that. We're just like fully having sex and then just going on missions, going to the temple, just lying. Mm. I mean, I don't know the percentage. I mean, I know people who've done that, but like I'm not like, yeah. We just heard a baby cry, but I think we're in the clear. Let's see. Oh, this is the last story. Nickmo stories count, right? A Tinder Nickmo started off with us going to an ice cream shop and him running into a mission companion. When we got back to his apartment, he kicked his newly engaged roommate and fiance out so we could watch Tarzan. We didn't make it five minutes before he started kissing me. Tarzan. Imagine someone suggesting Tarzan, a well, grown adult. Well, yeah, because it couldn't it had to be something familiar that you didn't actually want to watch. <laughs> There's so many other options. So you, it's true. It's like just Phil Collins in the back <laughs> while you're making out. Can you feel? <laughs> no, that's Lion King. Oh, that's right. <laughs> it might be Phil. That might did Phil, no. I don't think Phil Collins did Lion King. Probably not. Tarzan is. I can make out to that song. <laughs> <laughs> Should we try it? <laughs> um. Okay. Didn't make it five minutes before he started kissing me. As the night went on, it somehow turned to us talking about past relationships. I had just gotten out of a crappy relationship and said that the previous boy had, quote, treated me like shit. This man jumps on top of me and growls, say it again. I said, I'm sorry, what? He says lower, shit, say shit again. It turns me on when girls swear. I had to fight the laughter. The night ended about 1 a.m. when I said I needed to go home so I could get up for my 8 a.m. class. He wanted me to stay over, but I firmly said, no, take me home. As he drove me back, he told me the car he was driving was a rental and asked if I wanted to break it in, but just with a quick makeout before going back inside. I still cannot believe that this is a real thing that happened to me. Oh, my God. (laughs) Did you break it in? (laughs) She didn't say. If she said shit, you know... And then it's gonna get him real rough. But then she kept on. But it ended at one a.m. So she continued to say shit. (laughs) Maybe we don't know when she first said shit. So the the timeline's a bit unclear. Growling, growling shit. Say shit again. It turns me on when girls swear. (laughs) I remember actually being in high school and we were hanging out with these guys from a different school, and I said a swear word. I don't know shit ass i don't know and this guy we were with was like yeah like i think it's such a turn off when girls swear i remember th- being around that and like feeling like i had to think that way thinking it was a turn off when girls swore yes in high school well yeah in high school and like even like maybe post mission just feeling like that's what i was supposed to feel mm. Like yeah. it was like, ugh, she's like so trashy. Yeah, if you do, if you swear, then it's. But I didn't really feel that way. I just was like, when guys would say that, I was like, yeah, you know, like I didn't understand. That with girls, yeah, when a guy would say it was a turn off if a girl yeah. swore. I remember feeling so crazy and like embarrassed that I had sworn, like literally said shit. God forbid. <laughs> That's so stupid. It's so stupid. At least this it's, guy liked it. It's true. I love it 
it turns me on when girls swear while watching Tarzan. Me too. I'll try it. You like when girls swear? It turns you on now? Only if Tarzan's on in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be a very particular circumstance. Yeah. Do you feel like after listening to these stories, I know we talk a lot about dating, feeling like we missed out on dating, which I still feel. I feel like that's valid. I don't think I'm that sad I missed out on Mormon dating, which is the dating I would have done. I agree. I I mean, none of this stuff surprised me, actually. Really. What about getting eaten out by a guy named Joseph Smith? I mean, those details <laughs> surprised me. But like the act of getting eaten out at a church function actually doesn't surprise me. I, by a guy named Joseph Smith. <laughs> by a guy named Joseph <laughs> that's crazy does nothing shock you it's no i mean i get what you're saying but oh yeah you can see of course all like, of this stuff makes sense within the the framework of like Mormonism. yes within like, the cultural context yes. yeah totally. yeah I, all of it's like oh my gosh yeah that's like tell me something i don't know <laughs> like i was so bored <laughs> no i was not not i was like, entertain me geez i was not bored i see what you're saying it's like it they were radical sense, they were radical stories they're radical a- anecdotes that show what is pretty typical for mormon dating culture yeah so if anyone comes to my instagram or tiktok and says you're cherry picking crazy stories of course that's literally the point yeah. but a i have hundreds of them way more where that came from and b they are anecdotes that show what happens in Mormon dating culture? Just yeah. because the stories are kind of crazy, it doesn't mean that that is not happening on you know a spectrum pretty typically, I would say. Yeah. But it was interesting reading these because not that I've been thinking about the dating thing, which we've talked about on the podcast before, but I do think sometimes, obviously, we've both talked about being like, oh man, like I wish I got to date more and I wish I got to discover myself more. But thinking about it, if I hadn't left Mormonism... I'm actually really glad I didn't date longer in the Mormon context because it sounds miserable as hell. And it's not about self-discovery or self-acceptance. Maybe you have more time to learn who you are and what you want if you don't rush into something. But I still feel like you're just so focused on like, I need to get married. I need to move forward in my life and make these next covenants that I actually feel grateful in hindsight that I didn't date longer within Mormonism. Yeah. I agree. I agree. It's kind of funny because it's like, okay, no, like you can only figure out who you are through like experiencing life um, without more. I feel like not really, but like by peeling away certain ideas of reality, Mm. you know, if you're dating within like a certain framework of mind, you're going to operate within that and you're not going to actually be as efficient in in figuring out who you are or like what you want or like and whatnot it's actually pretty i think problematic for personal growth i think to be obviously operating in general within that framework where you feel like so like rigid and judge judged and then like all these like these guilt and shame and like you're just operating for these other reasons you're not operating about how you feel and Mm. so like you enter like a date from with all that baggage with lots of layers lots of layers of like of angles that you're trying to like fit like make this relationship happen Mm -hmm. and fit and align with all these things yeah and and it's like really just like sad that that that's i mean a lot of us i mean we a lot of us get married in the temple or in the temple a lot of us get married in the church most of us listening probably did right maybe not most but a large chunk of us did for better for worse i think like it doesn't really matter you accept the past and you try to move forward and like and grow and focus on like personal growth right i'm actually grateful that we got married so quick because of that you know that we didn't have to deal with a lot of that Yeah, and it's really discouraging and demoralizing to be, it sounds like, and I'm not trying to project because I don't know what everyone's experiences are with it, but I think it would feel, there's so much shame around being single as a Mormon person. There's so much 
shame in it. You feel like you should be married or there's something wrong with you. You should be in a serious relationship or there's something wrong with you. And that's just already a really bad motivation to be dating so desperately and to be, like you said, entering a relationship already with this mentality of like, I need to be with someone because that's what I'm supposed to do. That's what everybody around me is doing. You already feel behind. And yeah, I just think it leads to crazy dating dynamics as these stories show. And to your point, I kind of see Mormonism as a box where it's like you can do self-discovery within that box. And if we had gotten married later, we could have done more self-discovery, but we would have still been in a box. Mm -hmm. And until breaking out of that box at least for us and in our experience, there wasn't that much further. I don't think I could have grown or figured myself out really. And I actually think getting married and moving forward in that stage of life helped me grow and progress in a sense that because of the Mormon box, I couldn't have really done yeah, and without I think, getting married. Totally. I think we matured much quicker, yeah. quicker by choosing to get married. And I think that was like the catalyst for growth, especially for me, I think marrying you I got lucky. I got lucky that I married someone who was educated and was pushing boundaries already within the Mormon framework without like realizing, I don't don't think you realized that you were like Mm. doing that. And I mean, that's what led you to be starting this, this feminist movement through girls camp. And I've told you that before, you know, I'm grateful that we were able to mature at a young age, but also I think it would have been nice to like take the pressure off and just like be okay with fucking up and like being a kid and like yeah be discovering yourself discovering myself and like learning from mistakes and 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 hopefully a lot of these people who made these mistakes in these stories like learn from yeah. them i hope yeah um but probably no nah, they probably doubled down and then maybe eventually learned but like i know it'd be interesting to see where these people are now i know maybe he's still out there wearing a pair of winter gloves in the summer as not to touch a female, (laughs) the female body. At least if he did end up touching you, his hands wouldn't be cold. (laughs) (laughs) He removes his gloves and has toasty warm hands with which to caress your body. Because you always, whenever I touch your leg and my hands are cold. Yeah, your hands are always cold. You maybe do have circulation issues back to where we started with our campfire chat. Yeah. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for those kind words. And I'm glad that you had a mission to get married and you married me. Me too. Would you like to watch Tarzan after we stop recording? That'd be awesome. (laughs) I love you. Thank you. Thank you to everybody for listening and sending your crazy date stories. Be safe out there if you're dating. Hopefully if you are, it's not Mormon boys. And we'll see you next week. Happy camping. Bye. Bye. G-I-R-L-S-C.